Now, that day we discussed a very interesting patient that Himal presented. Where is this? Is it gone home? The plan is okay. Right? We have given everything. So, we discussed an interesting patient last on Friday. A patient with who was 44 who came with who had been diagnosed to have hypertension one year ago and we thought it might be a secondary cause for hypertension. We think of pheochromocytoma. Right? And we are thinking of, we talked about investigating, look for causes, look for the end organ damage. Right. Uh, what we will do today is just very briefly discuss the principles of management of hypertension. Right? Very simple, just keep it simple. Nadi Pai. The first thing you have to know is that non-pharmacological management plays a major role in hypertension management, right? plays a major role and sometimes non-pharmacological therapy itself can manage the blood pressure, that is something that you need to know. So, what are these non pharmacological measures? Diet, diet. What do you need to do for a hypertensive patient? Diet, low salt diet. Right. Any specific dietary plans you have heard of that people do for hypertensive patients? What? Dash diet. Read what that is. Dash D A S H. Now there is a big argument going on these days whether the dash diet or the Mediterranean diet is better. Right? That's fine. Mediterranean diet, of course, <laughs> yeah. whether that includes olives and all of these bloody things. So obviously that's not practically applicable in this country. So uh, Dash diet is basically fruits and mainly fruits and vegetables. A that is the main trend. Dash D A S H it stands for something. Just read a little bit about what it is. Right. Dash diet, salt reduction, then stopping smoking and alcohol, lifestyle modifications. And aerobic exercise, aerobic exercise. Right? If the patient does all of this, actually the blood pressure can be dropped by about four to five millimeters mercury. It's a can get a significant drop with all these lifestyle dietary modifications. Okay. Okay. Then we come to drugs. In whom do you start drugs? So, the way I ask that question is not all. Now, in diabetes, you are talking about diagnosis, you give drugs, but in hypertension, you do not give drugs to everybody. What sort of people do you give drugs to? Yes, if they have a significant cardiovascular risk. Okay. If they have target organ damage, yes. So, you give drugs if they have target organ damage, if they have a significant cardiovascular risk profile. 
what else what else if the initial blood pressure is very high right if the initial blood pressure is very high Okay, now here keep a little bit of room to write down the latest classification of blood pressure the various cut off levels just changed last year so you need to write that down that might change next year also that I can't help but basically now there is a new classification of hypertension right? various stages and levels of hypertension right. okay. So, patients who have a cardiovascular risk, target organ damage, people who have come with a very high blood pressure, right? You start treatment. Okay. What are the first line drugs for hypertension? First line drugs. Now, remember, they do, we do not use this ABCD algorithm anymore. We have a sort of a easier way of doing things. There are four first line drugs for hypertension. Four. What are they? Is basic medicine. So, how should you go to the four first line drugs for hypertension? ACE inhibitors, beta blockers are not first line therapy, angiotensin receptor blockers, calcium channel blockers, and diuretics. So, those are the four first line drugs for hypertension. Four first line drugs, right? Okay. Okay. And you have an absolute freedom in selecting any drug that you want from this list, right? You have an absolute freedom in selecting any drug you want from this list. So all are equal now. All these drugs are equal. right but remember there might be certain compelling indications for certain drugs compelling indications are all compelling indications for certain drugs now the one of the commonest examples i can give is say a patient has hypertension diabetes and nephropathy what is the obvious drug you are going to select from these four? S inhibitor. That is a compelling indication. Okay, so, that is one example. If a patient has heart failure and hypertension, again S inhibitor. So, there are compelling indications for the use of these drugs. Okay. If a patient has stable angina and hypertension you might use a calcium channel block so these are compelling indications for use of antihypertensives right okay fine now like any other drug you have to consider other things like contraindications availability patient preference also when you are selecting a drug right so those also come into the picture but you have freedom in selecting any drug you want but if the patient has compelling indications like diabetes heart failure you might select one over the others that is the basic principle nowadays in hypertension management right. okay okay do we use one drug or combinations of drugs in hypertension? This is again a very controversial sort of field. We remember the pharmacology, I think you were taught that monotherapy is better than polytherapy. But now this is actually turning a little bit, and people are now using these combined pills for hypertension, where they have maybe two drugs in one pill two drugs in one pill, sometimes even three drugs in one pill. So, that is a sort of a new trend 
in hypertension management. People are trying to use multiple drugs. Right. So, patient does not have to swallow how many tablets because it is in one day. What do you think the advantage of this might be giving many drugs? Yeah, small doses, you will be using small dose, therefore, side effects will be less rather than increasing a drug to its maximum, combining drugs might reduce some of the side effects. And also you might be hitting two pathways at, at the same time, which might be more effective than only hitting one path. Right. So, for example, if you give a calcium channel block and AC inhibitor, you are knocking off two pathways that lead to hypertension. So, that might be useful. Right. Okay. But unfortunately, these are not available in our government sector. So, we still use these single drugs and increase them to the maximum doses and then add another one. Okay, fine. Last thing you need to know about hypertension management is about resistant hypertension. What is that? What is resistant hypertension? You are patient is on three drugs, maximum tolerable doses, but still the blood pressure is not under control. Okay, still the blood pressure is not under control. Now, what could be the causes for this? Yeah, actually, one of the commonest things we see is really pseudo resistant. It is not really resistant, it's pseudo because of something like poor compliance, right? White coat hypertension, Evagi. So, it is not really resistant, pseudo resistant. So, if generally in resistant hypertension, we now do ambulatory blood pressure measurements to confirm it, right? Ambulatory blood pressure measurements usually. Right. Okay. If you exclude all the pseudo causes. Resistant hypertension patients have to be evaluated for a secondary cause, have to be evaluated for a secondary cause. There is no way out of that. And they have to be evaluated for a secondary cause. If there is no secondary cause, you have to add some other drugs. If there is secondary cause, you obviously treat it. Ne? If you there is no secondary cause, what is the first line drug for resistant hypertension? So, you do everything, no secondary cause, absolutely nothing. You have increased three drugs to the maximum doses, you are not getting any control at all. What is the drug of choice for resistant hypertension? Anybody knows? Spironolactone. The drug of choice for resistant hypertension is spironolacto. Har. Okay. Har, go, go, go. Any questions? So, we have discussed about the main principles of management of hypertension. Now, remember it is very unlikely that you will get a patient only with hypertension for exam unless it is something like this that Himal discussed where there is a lot of thing to discuss in the secondary causes and investigations. So, hypertension is going to be a small discussion in a larger case. So, it just you need to discuss these principles right what drug would you give and so on. Yeah. Good. 
हरी ओके ऑफन एनुअल 